In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear fathers, my dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, in today's gospel, we are facing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, being approached by this young Pharisee, this young fellow. Now that is the first time when he is approached, because we know except the people that followed him to listen to the salv salvific words, he also was followed by the Pharisees to find or to put a trap for him, to trap him in a way, to be able to accuse him, to condemn him, because this is what they were usually doing, accusing and condemning, that his teaching is different, that he came to destroy and abolish the law and the commandments. And this young fellow, again with the same approach, good teacher, what shall I do to inherit life eternal? So and the answer is why you're calling me good if you do not accept me as the savior, as the son of God, which I am. So then, that you know that only one God is good. So then why are you calling me good? What's the point of calling me good? So you see, just from the beginning of this, the discussion, he's opening to him his identity. If you want to be, but he's being patient. And first, he is opening to him the law, the Torah. What is written in the law? What you're reading of it? And he's telling him, oh, all of this I'm following from, from my youth, from my childhood. All right, so pretty much he's saying that I'm doing everything that the law is asking me to do. But he still feels that there is something, would be something more that he could do. And he was wondering, what was that something more that he could do to be perfect? Which we know that there is no one perfect except God. Even the saints, they were completely perfect. So as human beings, we all have a bad habit or whatever, something that is bringing us to the bitter reality that we are human beings. We have weaknesses, and by no means we are perfect. There is no way that just a mortal man can be perfect. So, and he wants us to understand this, and he's pointing it in his discussion with this young fellow and saying, okay, so the law is saying to love your God, to do, not, do not commit adultery, do not steal, love your parents. And at the end, he's saying love your neighbor as yourself. So two things are very important in our life, to, life God, to love God and to see in your neighbor's face to find God and to love your neighbor as you love yourself. So because no one hates himself, right? If you are, you need something you're immediately, you're doing. You're going, buying, you're in pain, you're going to the doctor, or so you're taking care of yourself. So if we would be able to see in our neighbor's face ourselves first, first, because we, if we, as I said many times, if we cannot find ourselves, we cannot get to know ourselves, of course you're not going to know God. And if you're not loving your neighbor, then you're a hypocrite. Because you're being 
egotistic, egocentric. It's everything, it's turning and spinning around you, not around God. Because this is what he said at the end, with God, all things are possible. So when we are, will be focused on the face of Christ and make him the center of our life, and let everything spin around him, not around us. Being around everything, being about, about God and about the crucified Lord. And not about our, ourselves. As unfortunately the modern man and the modern society is doing. We, in a way, when we are baptized, we, sh we shall take off, leave off the old man, the old character, but we are holding on to it. We're not living it. We are holding on to that old character, old man, and we are living according to the fallen man, not according to the reason, the resurrected, into the face of the sacrificed Christ. We have, as he said, to deny ourselves to deny our ego and to deny our old man in order to found ourselves and to find God ultimately because that's our goal to find God so if we cannot see in each other God and his grace then so it's something wrong that it's a mistake and we have to work on that we have to water our heart with the tears of repentance to soften our heart, to make it open to understand first the commandments, to get to fall in love with God, to fall in love with our neighbor. In, all, in order to soften these hard and tough ground of our heart because if we're not softening it and those that worked on the land you know sometimes if if you get a soft land it's easy to prepare it for planting right but if it's tough no that particular parcel of land wasn't worked for years it's really tough and you need to put a lot of force and there are roots and and maybe stones and whatever. So and it's really hard to work that piece of land. It takes a lot of effort and it takes longer time. So the same thing it happens with our hearts. When we are closed within ourselves, we're not open, we're not taking confession, we're not participating in the mysteries of Christ, our heart becomes tough and then it's really hard to work with that heart so and and jesus it's it's saying if we are focused on his on his face on his character then it's possible but if we want to do the things according to our own understanding according to our own desire our way, right? Not God's way, but our way, because God is the way. So if we want to take a different route than the one that he taught us, then we are going to into the opposite direction. And we'll never be able to reach our goal, to reach our destination. Like... If you want to travel someone, somewhere in, I don't know, mountains, desert, whatever, you, you need to, to have the equipment, right? The compass and other equipment in order to be able to travel, to keep the direction, to stay on track. So the, the same thing in our spiritual life, the Lord gave us these spiritual instruments Fasting, prayer, confession, 
good works, loving each other. So all these are the instruments that are leading us to life eternal. Because this is our goal, this is our journey that we are taking from the moment we were born on earth. So we, we are starting an individual journey. Yes, he gave us the church as a helper to be able to be connected through the church, through the mysteries, to get a boost, a support, a spiritual support, to be easier for us to travel this journey. So, and those that are outside of the church, they are alone. And alone is very difficult because there are so many impediments wild beasts and whatever can can be outside and put yourself in danger but when we are as a group united as he said where are two or three united in my name i'm with them so you see how important is also to be part of the church to be connected as a force to push together the burdens of this life and this is the role of the church to come. The priest is there for each one and for everyone to support, to give you an advice, to pray for you, to guide you. That's another compass to show us the way. Not that the priest is better than you. Just the priest is that tool which is guided directly by the hand of God so God is using the creation for his own creation to help us to guide us because why is he doing that because he loves us so much and he doesn't want our perdition he doesn't want us to get lost on our journey but he's giving us these points of repair to to get instructed reinforced to get new forces to be able to continue the good fight for our salvation. So, and now, seeing this young man, when he is giving him this direction and saying, well, if you are doing all of this, then one thing is missing. Sell your belongings, give the money to the poor, and come and follow me. Wow, that's really tough. How, how difficult is to hear such a sentence. Like, <coughs> my parents worked hard for, for all this inheritance. Not that it was necessarily his merit, right? He inherited all of this. And now you're telling me to give it to the poor. What do you mean by that? How can I do that? And what I'm going to starve myself to become a beggar? There is no way. You see how difficult it is for us to trust him because Everything has to do with the trust and belief in God. Because he didn't really see, he, he was doing all of this. And many times we think that if we, we are fasting uh, and praying and whatever, we are going to be saved. Or we are going to the church regularly and that's, that's enough. No, that's not enough. The prayer and the faith shall be accompanied by the good works so but the good works is to be good users of God's gifts because ultimately everything we have in our possession is God's it's not ours he just granted us these gifts to be good users to use all, all of these 
for a good cause, for a good purpose. Again, using his creation for his creation. To love each other, to take care of each other, to love our neighbor. So, and as I mentioned, if something happened to you, you're in pain, you're running to the best doctors, doing the best for, for yourself, right? But are we ready to do the same exactly thing for our neighbor, for those in need? Even though if we are willing to open somehow our hearts to a limit, right? To an extent, not fully, because it's not me personally, right? It's not a member of my family. It's a stranger. <coughs> See, as long as we are seeing our brothers, our neighbors as strangers, we are not fully in communion with God <clears throat> because we are setting barriers. <clears throat> so we cannot be reached, our heart cannot be reached yet. So this, this is something that we shall work onto. Not hold onto the old habits, old men. Not hold onto the Mammonauts, which is the prince of darkness but hold on to the grace of God. Hold on to the love, which is the foundation of Christianity, the foundation of everything that is surrounding us. Let us put at the bottom of our heart that foundation, that cornerstone, with his, which is Jesus Christ himself, which is the love and the light of the world. Let us put it and let us make him the center of our life. Let us accept him in our hearts. Let us follow him throughout our lives. Let, us, let him to become part of our life. Let him to become the guide of our life. Not being stubborn. Saying, I know what to do. I don't need anybody, anybody's advice. I know better. If we are not accepting the advice that comes through the church, from the Holy Gospel, from the Holy Apostles, Holy Fathers, then we are not accepting Christ himself. Let us accept him. Let us embrace him. And let him become the guide of our lives. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.